Before we get started in creating a file to actually use our account class, I just want to note that I added a couple of more methods um, down here that will actually help um, get information from the class. I have a get balance method, which just returns the balance, and I have a get books checked out, which just returns the list of books checked out. Notice that in nowhere in this class do I have any information about printing things. We leave that up to um, the person using our class to decide how they want to print information out. We do, however, want to make it easy so they can get information about various items in the class, and that's why we put these get methods uh, in here. So let's go ahead and set up a file to use this class. So I'm going to do PyCharm, I'm going to do a new file, and I'll call it using account.py. Go ahead and erase this. Well, the first thing I want to do if I want to use my class, and this is something that you've seen a bunch of times already, is I need to import the class file. And so I'm going to import account. And that way I can use all the properties and methods in my account class. And let's go ahead and create a new instance of the account. So I'll give it a variable. Um, so I'll call it, let's just do my name. And whenever you create an instance of an account, you have to remember preface it by account dot account. Remember like turtle dot forward, turtle dot left. In this case, I give the file name and then an, the class name and then parentheses and now I have to put in my parameters. Notice that self is put in automatically. I don't have to write it here. And I can put in a name for the account and my account number one, two, three, four, five. All right, let's go ahead and run using my account and nothing happened. That was pretty boring. So let's actually um, use some of our methods to add something to this account. So I can use Brian, which is the variable associated with that account. And you can see when I hit the dot, it shows me a list of the methods and properties that I can access um, in my class. So if I do, uh, let's, let's actually check out a book. So I'm gonna check out um, Harry Potter. And then let's check out, um, I don't know, let's check out Gone with the Wind, very famous book. All right, and then now let's actually print something. Let's do print the name of my instance. And again, Brian is an instance of the account class. So Brian is an object. So let's print out uh, get books checked out. Let's see what that looks like when I run it. And you can see when I print books checked out, it prints out the list of books. This method adds the books to my list, this method prints that out. Well, let's go ahead and return Gone with the Wind. So I'm going to put my instance in my class, then the dot. Let's choose Return Book. And I'm going to return Gone with the Wind. And let's go ahead and print out Get books checked out again. See what that looks like. So here's my initial list. And then after I return Gone with the Wind, I just have Harry Potter left checked out. Well, let's go ahead and return Harry Potter. But let's say I turned it in late, so I have to add a fine of two dollars and fifty cents. I turned it in really late. Now if I want to do a print get balance, let's see what that looks like. And I have a balance of 2.5. Well, let's go ahead and do Brian dot pay fine. And let's pay, let's pay a dollar. Let's say I only had a dollar fifty on me at the time. And let's pay, print out the balance again. 
and see what that looks like. So I had Harry Potter. I re had Gone with the Wind. I returned Gone with the Wind. Returned Harry Potter. Had a $2.50 fine. Paid $1.50 of it. Now I have a dollar left on my account. So you can see we can use the methods that we created in our class once we create an instance of the class and then we refer to that instance by its name and then dot and then the method or property that we want to access. Remember when we introduced the idea of classes, we said that you could make multiple instances of that class or multiple objects. Let's see what that might look like. Let's say I have another person I want to set up with an account. Uh, we'll call her Christine and we'll use account. We'll make a new instance of an account and her name will be Christine and her account number will be 67890. So when I do that, it makes a new account from my account class blueprint. Let's go ahead and check out a couple of books to Christine. So we're going to do christine.checkout. Let's say she's taking the dystopian novel class. So she's going to read 1984. And she's also going to check out oops, Brave New World. Now, when I want to do a print uh, Christine dot books checked out. Let's see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and print all this. There's all my earlier finds, and here's a list of Christine's books that she has checked out. And again, before we talked about the keyword self, and you notice we're only using one account class, but I have these multiple instance instances. And the reason this works is because it's the self keyword that keeps track of whether I'm using Christine or Brian, which instance of the object I'm using. That's why self is so important. So now that you've seen how to work with multiple in instances of an account, let's go ahead and get rid of this. The one last thing we want to try to do is what happens if I actually try to print the object itself? And I'm going to take out a lot of these other things. And again, I'm just going to print out just the object and see what happens. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, you can see it's actually printing what it is. It's an account object and this string of numbers and letters. This is actually the memory address where my object is located, stored in memory on my computer. And you can tell it is an object because it says it's type object. So it's actually a lot more helpful if when I print an object, it gives me something useful. So in the last video, we're going to look at how to configure our class so that it prints out something more helpful.